What is going on everybody and welcome to a brand new video on my channel. My name is Sean aka Elite and in today's video we're going to be talking about coin sucks. It's something that EA used as a tactic to clear your club of liquid coins before team of the year. Now it's nothing new. They've done it year after year after year. This year I think it might be less obvious just because of the non-stop content that we have been seeing you might think that it's just blending into the rest of the content but no there is a purpose to it and i want to teach you guys how to determine whether you should be doing certain SBCs or saving coins or cards as well because a lot of us are going into team of the year now with a very bare club now not to say that you didn't make great decisions with where you put those players but that doesn't deny the fact that a lot of us don't really have much in our transfer list or in our club especially you take a look at your club right now there's probably a lack of high rated uh fodder cards there's probably a lack of players from each individual league that are gold cards just because of all the freeze challenges because of all the upgrade packs etc for me i've got nothing other than somer or rui patricio that's sbc fodder that's high rated and then if you take a look at the different leagues that i have uh let's say Serie A, you take a look at this and i don't really have too many players from this league either just a handful of golds and when you consider how many different cards i could have in the league it's definitely a lot less than what it's been in previous years and that's just one league for example that i'm using so with that being said, let's take a look at squad building challenges out right now, and we're going to determine whether it's a coin suck or if it's actually worth doing or if it falls somewhere in between. So for cards like James Madison, this is a team of the tournament card, but it's also not dynamic. So you're looking at an 84 rated card that's not going to be very good going too far forward. But on the other hand, it doesn't cost you a ton to do this SBC. But an 84 rated team, it's still going to put a dent in your club in terms of 84, 83, 85 rated players. And that goes for a lot of these squad building challenges. The biggest example of this is Aaron Juan Basaka. This guy, unfortunately, very expensive because not only do you need a 84 rated team, which is just like the other SBC I showed you, but you need an 85 and an 86 rated team as well, which is going to cost you nearly 400 thousand coins for Aaron Juan Basaka. Not to say he's a terrible card, but he absolutely is a coin suck. It's a way to get you guys to take tradable coins, putting them into an untradable player, and those coins aren't like going to another player, all right? They really aren't, other than traders, I guess you could say, because you're buying cards that are SBC fodder and putting coins into traders' pockets. The traders are going to obviously go in to team of the year in a better position than most of the rest of the community that aren't consciously thinking about coin sucks, which is why you're here and why you're going to be in a better position as well. But this Wamba Soccer card, again, not a bad card. It's definitely usable. It's definitely good, okay? 81 pace, 85 defense, 83 physicality. Those are the stats that matter for a center back. He's only six foot zero, which isn't a very tall center back, but it's also not too short, but it's definitely not really on the tall side of a center back. But he's very fast for a center back. And looking at his stats, if you, you know, need dribbling, he's a very good dribbler for a center back, but you don't really dribble much with a center back, so it's not that important. He's got a good passing, terrible shooting, but you're never going to shoot with your center back. Uh, passing's, you know, 74. It's not bad. Um, it's, not, it's not amazing, but it's definitely good. And you're looking at 400,000 coins, untradeable. So not even tradable, 400,000 coins, untradeable. But here's the thing. If you take a look at the market, at a very similar card, a very, very similar card uh, is Joe Gomez. All right, they're almost identical in the stats that actually matter. If you take a look at Joe Gomez, just his regular card, you don't even need his uh, tradable inform or anything, just his regular Joe Gomez card, which is going for about 40,000 coins right now, maybe 39K. This card's got 82 pace, which is actually slightly faster. He's got 83 defense and 80 physicality. So on those three stats, it's 80 plus as well. He's got less dribbling by 10. He's got less passing by about eight. And the shooting, again, doesn't matter. But this card has been renowned to be one of the best center backs, if not the best center back in the game, by a lot of people. And no matter how you rate him, he's in your top five. Maldini, Van Dyke, uh, Varane, and Gomez are pretty much all in the meta for this year. So Joe Gomez is a card that is tradable 
is exactly the same as the Aaron Wambasaka new center back card. Not only that, but he's actually taller and has better jumping. So in that aspect, he's better defensively. He might not have as good dribbling, as good passing, but in the end, they're very similar cards and you cannot deny that. But this card is tradable and it's also 360,000 coins cheaper. On top of that, even if you lose 5 to 10k on the card going into Team of the Year, you'll probably actually lose a little bit more than that. I can expect this Joe Gomez to go from 40k, maybe down to 25, 26, 27k, maybe even lower. But let's say you lose 15,000 coins, you still can sell that card for 25k once it becomes a little bit less usable. As we progress throughout the year, we're going to see more upgrades and more upgrades and more upgrades. As these upgrades come out, other cards kind of get phased out of the meta. Joe Gomez might last a little bit longer in the meta. He's probably going to last maybe a couple more months before there are other upgrades that, you know, people that play in Weekend League go ahead and buy or the meta changes. Whatever it is, this Joe Gomez is a very good card, but eventually it will be phased out and there will be better cards to choose from, especially with Team of the Year cards coming out, Team of the Season in June, which is a very long time away, uh, Future Stars, and they're pretty much dropping a promo every other week at this point. So there's got to be new cards that are coming out that are going to compete more with these meta cards like Varane and Joe Gomez and Van Dyke. So eventually it'll get phased out. And what does that mean? It also means that Aaron Juan Basaka and these other SBCs are going to get phased out as well. Once you get to March, this Aaron Wambasaka is going to be much worse in game than it is right now, simply because of the competition in the meta right now. This Wambasaka, again, I'm not saying it's a bad card, but it will eventually get phased out. And here's the thing, you're never gonna get that 400,000 coins back. And that 400K right now is gonna be worth more than 400K in March. It's gonna be worth more going uh, forward. Earlier you have it, it's worth more. That's how it works in every FIFA. So this is a coin suck. It's a way to take those liquidized coins out of your club so that you don't have them during team of the year. And what happens then? You get bored of the game because you can't do as many SBCs. You can't buy packs with coins and that's gonna get you to buy FIFA points. And that's their whole tactic. That's what they want as their end goal, is for Team of the Year to be a great time for FIFA point sales. And you're not going to fall into that because you're preparing early. Let's take a look at some other upgrade packs that are coin sucks, something that's not too worth it. Now here's the thing, Foot Freeze Challenge, it's not a terrible SBC to do. Sure, it's going to take some players out of your uh, club, but with a mega pack in return, you're going to get a lot of those players back. So these SBCs, that's with a mega pack, not really a terrible coin suck. I think that you're getting value for what you submit, and there's no reason not to really do these, especially because you want to do something while you get onto the game, and that's a perfect thing to do. But where are the upgrade packs? And I'm not sure if maybe they're out yet, but they will be out soon if they're not out yet. And I know they were out during Black Friday, but we saw upgrade packs um, during that time that were like 80, yeah, there it is, right there. 80 plus player pick, 81 double upgrade. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I was honestly very surprised not to see them when I was searching through. I don't know if you heard it in my voice, but I was expecting these to already be out in preparation for taking coins away from Team of the Year. So when I didn't see them, I was like, wow, that's surprising me that they're not utilizing these player picks or these upgrade packs to take more players out of your club and take more coins out of your club. So these player picks, again, you might get lucky, you might have a little bit of value in these. They're obviously a little bit appealing because that way they'll get you to do them. But here's the thing, you're gonna submit for an 81 to an 87 rated upgrade, and let's be real, most of those cards are gonna be 81, 82, 83. If you get very lucky, it'll be higher rated than 83, but it's gonna be very rare for you to get more than an 83 rated player out of this squad building challenge. And what do you have to submit? It's definitely gonna be more than one player. It's actually five gold players to submit, and on top of that, you still need six players that are silver and bronze in the in the team. It's not terrible requirements, but again, you're submitting five gold players for one gold player. And here's the thing, there's really nothing crazy that you can get out of an 81 to 87 rated upgrade. Let's take a look at the 81 double upgrade, something that's a little bit more valuable because there's no cap on it. Sure, you're still probably gonna get a lot of 81s and 82s, but there's no cap of 87. And here's the thing, you need all gold, 11 gold players, and you get two back. 11 gold players, you get two back, and you need seven rares, and you get two back. Is it worth it? 
you might get lucky, you might get something, but here is the truth behind it. No matter what you do, you're submitting, if you do 10 of these packs, 110 players, 77 of them being rare cards, or 70 of them being rare cards, excuse me, 70 of them are being rare cards, and you're getting 20 in return. And you're getting 20 total in return. That is taking your club from 110 players to 20 like that. It's very quick. Only takes 10 packs for you to go from 110 players in your club to 20. And a lot of those players, most of the time, are tradable. You might go out and want to do these squad building challenges with coins. You might be building these packs by buying players on the transfer market. You might be picking up players for 700 coins, 400 coins, 700 coins, depending on if they're rare or non-rare, and costing coins. And that's even worse. That's even worse, especially at this point in the year. Now here are two times during the year where it might be worth going for some of these coin sucks and hoping for a good pull. That's team of the year, okay? Which is what we're saving our coins for. And it's team of the season, okay? Because team of the season, there's some great upgrades. In fact, in the last two years, they've made team of the season upgrades higher rated than the team of the year upgrades. Mane, I had, I packed his team of the year last year. I was, I was pretty pissed that they made his team of the season higher rated, but... I digress. Either way, those are the two times of the year where these coin sucks are kind of worth it because you're possibly getting yourself, you know, the best card in the games, best cards in the game in return. And that's kind of what you play the game for. But doing it right now to try to get yourself a variety, it's actually hurting your club because you're taking so much value from your club and you're putting into something that doesn't have nearly as much value. Even if it looks more appealing, you're probably going to want to have 11 gold players in your club right now because those players are not only going to go up in value during team of the year because of the new new uh, upgrade packs sure there will be a lot of supply for certain cards that'll keep some of the lower rated low but you're going to want to have more players you're going to want to have more coins liquid and you can't fall for these traps that ea are putting out in squad building challenges so that's what I wanted to talk about today, especially with that Juan Basaka SBC. And if you guys have been helped out at all by this video, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I would greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more trading tips, squad building challenge guides, or more FIFA 21 content and beyond, hit that sub button for me. I would greatly appreciate it and help me help you out. It's pretty much a win-win situation. Just so many SBCs right now. Bruno Fernandez, a million coins for that card. I think it's actually 900k. 900,000 coins for an untradeable card. What a good card it is, but Team of the Year is in three weeks. Team of the Year is in three weeks! 900k! That's insane! Palatano. I remember I uh, I got his upgraded card last year. That got phased out real quick. 83 and an 85 rated team. Not a bad card. It's not a bad card. The devil will be attractive. All right? And that's what I'll leave you with, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.